Unitree just unveiled its next AI humanoid, the H2, and it's already shaking up the industry. While Boston Dynamics keeps Atlas locked behind lab doors and Tesla's Optimus still walks like it's in testing mode, Unitree is out here launching real, functional robots. The H2 looks sleek, built for performance, and proves that Unitree isn't slowing down anytime soon. Remember the H1 that ran marathons and took gold? The H2 continues that legacy, faster, stronger, and more refined than ever. Compared to the famous G1 robot, this new model feels like a leap, not just another prototype. Hey guys, welcome back to Next Gen AI. So let's start with the face. The H2 has this smooth, stylized, human-like face that's either gonna fascinate you or freak you out. Some people are calling it uncanny valley territory, like those silver androids from iRobot. One blogger straight up called it creepy cool, and honestly, it's hard to disagree. Unitree dressed this thing up in actual clothing for the demo video, and suddenly we're not looking at a robot anymore. We're looking at something that could pass you in a hallway and make you do a double take. That's intentional, by the way. Unitree wants you to feel comfortable around this machine because their whole pitch is that the H2 is born to serve everyone safely and friendly. Those are their words. Let's talk about what makes the H2 different from last year's H1 model. The H2 actually has a bit less mass to its frame compared to the H1, even though they're both full-size humanoids. The H1 weighed in at 103 pounds, while the H2 is 154 pounds. You're probably confused right now, wondering how H2 is less than H1. Stay with me. What I mean is the H2 redistributed its weight better. This clever engineering lends itself to much quicker footwork. You can see it in the videos. The thing moves with a speed and grace that the bulkier looking H1 just couldn't match in certain situations. Here's where it gets really interesting though. The H2 made a trade-off. Remember how the H1 set a speed record at 3.3 meters per second? It could sprint. The H2 sacrificed that raw speed for something arguably more valuable, dexterity and strength. It's limited to under two meters per second. But what it loses in sprinting, it gains in manipulation ability. Each H2 arm can carry 15 pounds normally and handle up to 46 pounds briefly. That's the same payload as the H1, but with way more control. Now this speed reduction wasn't just a design choice. It was also a safety lesson learned the hard way. During testing of the H1 model, there was an incident in the lab where the robot's high-speed movements led to an accidental collision with a researcher. The H1 sprint capabilities, while impressive for records, created genuine safety concerns in close quarters human environments. The researcher sustained minor injuries, but it highlighted a critical flaw in the previous generation. When a robot can move at 3.3 meters per second in confined spaces, reaction times become dangerously compressed. This incident reportedly influenced Unitree's decision to prioritize controlled, precise movements over raw speed in the H2. Safety over spectacle. The H2's reduced top speed isn't a compromise. It's a calculated improvement based on real-world lessons about human-robot interaction. Drop a comment below. Would you prioritize speed or safety if you were designing a humanoid robot? I'm genuinely curious about your take on this trade-off. And get this, the H2 can wear optional dexterous robotic hands. We're talking multi-finger hands called the Dex 5-1 that let it grip and manipulate objects with scary precision. It can fold clothes without squishing the fabric. Now let's compare this beast to the rest of Unitree's lineup because context matters. You've got three main players here. The H1 from 2023, the Compact G1 from 2024, and now the H2 from 2025. The G1 is the baby of the family at 1.3 meters tall and 77 pounds. It's designed for classrooms and light duty use. Starting price? About $16,000. That makes it the affordable entry point for universities and robotics labs wanting to experiment with humanoid AI. The H1 and H2 are both full size at roughly 1.8 meters. But remember that weight difference and that critical safety incident. The H1 was built for speed and set records in 400 meter sprints. It costs around $90,000, though some configurations run up to 129,000. 
but that speed came with risks that the H2 specifically addresses through better weight distribution, improved sensor arrays, and movement algorithms designed with human proximity in mind. The H2 isn't officially priced yet, but industry analysts expect it'll cost well over 100000 given the advanced specs and enhanced safety features. It's positioning itself as the high-end research and development platform that learned from its predecessor's mistakes. If you're enjoying this deep dive into humanoid robotics, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future breakdowns of cutting-edge tech like this. Trust me, the robot revolution is just getting started. But let's keep it real for a second. Is this the future or just another expensive tech demo? Unitree's CEO, Wang Xingxing, is pretty transparent about where things stand. He positions the H2 as a high-performance research and commercial platform, complementing their low-cost G1 model. But he also admits that humanoid robots still face serious technical limitations delaying mass adoption. Right now, the H2's use cases are mostly developmental and demonstrative. It's showcasing what's possible with human-like dexterity and AI capability, but it's not a finished consumer product you can just buy and bring home. China's robot scene is exploding right now, and Unitry is right there competing with the big players. Boston Dynamics has their Atlas doing backflips and parkour in labs, but Unitry is going for a more accessible price point. The H1 sold for around $90,000, and rumors say the H2 will be in that same ballpark for bulk orders. With government grants flooding the market to push prototypes into real production, the whole industry is opening up fast. Wang's vision? By 2030, thousands of robot fleets working warehouse shifts that never get tired. Jobs that humans take for granted but struggle with because, you know, we're human. So where does all this leave us? The H2 is a milestone. It's proof that humanoid robots are getting more capable, more human-like, and more ready for real-world applications. Universities and research labs will eat this up for studying bipedal locomotion, AI perception, and human-robot interaction. The high degree of freedom design makes it perfect for manipulation research, way beyond what the G1 can handle. And yeah, it'll make killer demos at trade shows and exhibitions because watching this thing move is genuinely mesmerizing. Let me tell you about a genuine pivot moment in robotics. Figure A, I just unveiled their third-generation humanoid, and this isn't another flashy tech demo. It's the inflection point where science fiction becomes consumer reality. Figure 01 was the rough prototype, all exposed wires and cautious first steps. Figure 2 proved the concept by actually working in BMW factories. But figure 03? This is where everything shifts. The entire design philosophy pivoted from factory workhorse to home companion. They're building for the messy chaos of your kitchen, your living room, your actual unpredictable life. Picture this. You come home exhausted, dishes piled in the sink, laundry scattered everywhere. You just tell this thing, clean up the kitchen, and it autonomously does it. No remote control puppet show. That's not a promise for 2035. That's what they're engineering right now in California. Here's what makes this approach brilliant. By solving for domestic chaos, Figure accidentally built something genuinely general purpose. Your home throws everything at a robot. Different lighting conditions, cluttered spaces, objects of every conceivable shape. Humans constantly rearranging furniture, pets, kids, random spills. If you can handle a home environment, you can handle pretty much anywhere. The robot stands five feet six inches, weighs 132 pounds, 9% lighter than figure 02. And here's the kicker. It's covered in soft textiles instead of hard plastic. Multi-density foam protects against pinch points. They're thinking about what happens when your toddler bumps into it or when it brushes past you in a narrow hallway. This isn't superficial safety theater. It's fundamental design thinking. Watch it load a dishwasher, a task that sounds mundane but is robotically brutal. Recognizing dozens of dish shapes, grasping without breaking anything, placing correctly in the rack. Figure 03 does this, clearing tables, sorting laundry, tidying rooms. The spatial memory that helps it remember where you keep coffee mugs also translates to warehouse navigation and inventory tracking. Every capability multiplies across use cases. Let me blow your mind with the hand engineering. Each hand has 16 degrees of freedom with near human dexterity. But figure went way beyond articulation. They developed in-house tactile sensors detecting forces as small as 3 grams. 
That's a paperclip's weight. The robot can distinguish between a secure grip and an impending slip before the object drops. Here's where it gets wild. Each hand has a camera embedded in the palm. When reaching into dark cabinets or confined spaces where head-mounted cameras are blocked, that palm camera provides redundant close-range visual feedback. It can see what it's touching and adjust in real time. This is hand-eye coordination that previous humanoids couldn't touch. The softer, adaptive fingertips increase surface contact for stable grasps across varied object shapes. Combined with tactile sensing and palm vision, you get compliant manipulation that adapts continuously. That's what enables folding fabric, handling wine glasses, or assembling small components. Previous humanoid robots were expensive engineering prototypes designed to prove concepts, not scale production. Figure 03 flips that completely. Every component was redesigned with manufacturability and cost in mind. Figure Built Bot Q, their dedicated California production facility capable of 12,000 robots annually, scaling to 100,000 units over four years. This isn't a research lab, it's a production line with state-of-the-art systems and full traceability for every subassembly. When you cut component costs by 90% and establish high volume production, economics transform completely. Tesla's targeting around $20,000 for Optimus. Figure's production approach suggests similar price points once volumes ramp. We're talking humanoid robots potentially costing less than a decent used car within a few years. That's the inflection point where adoption explodes. Inductive toe charging. Wireless charging coils built into the feet. The robot steps onto a charging mat and draws two kilowatts. No cables, no fumbling with connectors. Battery running low? It autonomously walks to the charging station, docks itself, tops up, and returns to work. In homes, it could have a designated spot in your utility closet. In warehouses, scattered charging pads enable recharging during natural workflow breaks. Fabric-wrapped body and colorways. The textile exterior isn't just aesthetic. It's engineering meets psychology. Darker tones for professional work environments, lighter grays and creams for homes. The soft goods are fully washable and tool-free removable. You can swap the robot's clothing for cleaning or customization. Hotels could have robots in bellhop outfits, hospitals in scrubs, warehouses in high-visibility vests. Appearance matters when getting people comfortable with humanoids in their homes. A fabric-covered robot in calming colors is far less intimidating than an industrial metal skeleton. Figure understands adoption hinges on trust, and trust starts with design prioritizing human comfort. Figure 03 becomes available to select commercial partners throughout 2025 for real-world testing and data collection. They're refining capabilities, identifying edge cases, improving reliability. By 2026, broader deployment, including home pilot programs. The goal? 100,000 robots produced over four years from BotQ alone. This isn't speculative capacity. It's infrastructure they've built and are actively ramping. Figure 03 represents the moment humanoid robotics shifted from experimental prototypes to deployable, scalable products. Home-first design, production-ready engineering, world-scale ambitions executed in California right now. The future where humanoid robots handle everyday tasks isn't decades away. It's being assembled today, and it's aiming for your kitchen. The robot revolution just went from concept to concrete reality.